right, guys, what we're going to talk to you about today is what to do on different tides. I came out to go fish some of the bridges in Pontchartrain. Got a nice red right here. Come on up here. Let's go fish the bridges that cross Pontchartrain. Notice that we didn't have any tide movement. And when it's totally, totally dead, what you want to do is look for passes, deep, narrow passes, such as this one we're in right here, which is the Wrigley's 90 bridge. And even though we may only catch a few here, this is a great place to wait for the tide to get going. And sometimes you pull up here thinking it's just, you know, passing time and you end up really finding them. And this might be the great best place to fish. But we put a few together, two reds and a trout so far. Let's see what we can do here. Pulled in. When I first pulled in, I was uh, just using the motor. It's 25, 30 foot deep here, so you, you don't have to be stealthily, stealthily quiet. So I was just using the motor. That way I could see where if I was marking some fish in certain areas, see if they really had any fish here. There's also a secondary bridge, the old bridge, which I used to love, that they actually blew it up with like dynamite or something when they built the new one. So a lot of the pieces of it are still down here. So I like to just hover around with the engine when I'm just checking to see if they have any fish. That way I'm back there by the GPS and I can make sure I can pinpoint where that old bridge is. A lot of times that's where the fish like to be. Um, right now we're fishing the um, very end of an incoming tide and it's gonna just, it's gonna start falling. I started off with a half ounce jig head to wait because it's so deep using the Shrimp Creole Matrix. And as we get a little velocity in this tide, we'll probably move around and look for some other areas. We may go take a ride out in Lake Bourne if it stays slick calm like this, or come back to the track. Maybe see if we can get that mega matrix to do some damage as the fish we caught last time we were there were really, really nice. See if we can get some good ones on the big one. But right now we're just passing the time, waiting for the tide to really get going before we want to leave this narrow passageway where the t you always have a flow here. I got a little trickle coming off the pollen, just started falling. Perfect tide for this spot. And that's really the, what you want to do, guys. If you got a super hard tide, go to a wide body area. If you got a very slack tide, go to where it consolidates, choke points, things like that. There's always a place to find a little bit of tide. I can promise you that. That excuse the tide wasn't moving, that's because you didn't go find the tide. There we go, little speck. Not the biggest in the world, but he'll stretch. I think, let me put him on the tape. He's actually just a hair short. I mean a hair, eighth of an inch. This is the setup here. Big heavy jig head, our biggest one and a half ounce bullseye on our most house you know one of our most household name lures the old shrimp creole just trying to throw it up current right here tide's still weak enough where i could throw down current up current it really don't matter i'm still pretty easily getting this half ounce to the bottom that's the keto if you can't get your lure to the bottom because of the current velocity it's time to venture elsewhere I was just jigging it straight up and down, straight up and down. I felt the bite and then I just let it go straight back to the bottom. And when you're fishing that 20 to 30 foot of water, it's called vertical jigging and you can do that. You could almost, you know, like drop shot rig it, especially when you don't have a lot of current like right now. 
Got that one on the uh, shrimp creole, vertical jigging directly under the boat right there. Felt the bite at the end of my retrieve. Let it go back to the bottom, missing. Back to the bottom, just basically bumping it straight up and down. This might be a good trout here. Caught him way off the bridge. There we go, yeah baby. Yeah baby, that's what I'll be talking about. Perfect place to wait for the tide to move. That's a good chunk right there, y'all. Good chunk. One of the largest trout that's ever been caught in Louisiana came from right here. But on the old bridge, which used to be one of my favorite places to fish, we used to catch some monsters on there. And it's not that the new bridge the fact that the old bridge is gone is the reason why we're catching these 14 inchers. It's because we just don't get those monsters like we used to. But back in 99, our friend Jason Trouillet caught an, a, a right over an 11 pounder here in September, which is not even known as a big trout month. That's how incredible this estuary was for several years. But all in all, it still holds fish. Catching them pretty decent today, just not monster fish, but maybe we'll see that again one day. If things ever get back to those epic years we used to see. We had four fish over 10 pounds caught between here and the Highway 11 bridge, all in just a three year period of time. Pretty incredible. Now a big one is a four pounder. It's amazing how an ecosystem can change like that. There we go. Putting a nice box together right here on 90. We were just coming here to waste a little time, wait for the tide to get going. It's still not really going that well, but the fish are here. That's a kind of a lucky little deal there. Happy accident. Okay. Okay, we're doing a little something to them now. Doing a little something. Let me put this one up and I'll show you just the technique. This is very tricky, not the easiest thing to do. So depending on the tide velocity, if it's really pulling hard in this super deep water, you gotta throw it straight into the tide. Right now it's still kind of mellow, so I can kind of throw at an angle. And when I tell you it's deep, it's deep. There's not many people that fish plastics in this deep of water around here, but it's very, very doable. You just gotta pick your days to do it. You just can't do this when it's really rolling through here. So it's almost a 15 count to get to the bottom. A little snag right there, I thought that was a fish. And that's what we're doing. We're fishing the snags because this is where the old bridge used to be. And that's just part of it. I'm gonna try to get it off by simply taking the boat and going over where it went. You just gotta counterplay the angle here. I'm not saying it's gonna definitely come off, but it may. It may. getting this one back oh yep there we did and if you saw right there when it can i felt it come loose i open my bail and i pull anytime you get snag guys with a bait caster the line with that tension you're putting in there it's gonna bury so the moment you get it free or break your line whichever one comes first 
simply pull out the first like four or five feet and then it'll what happens is you go to if you don't do that or you go to chaos it just stops right there it's a little tip but anyway let's get back to the technique here it's a good 15 count to get to the bottom you see i'm opening my bail so i feel like i need to reopen the bail to let more line out that's all i do and it's still the poncha train pop just allowing it to get down to the bottom in this deep water swift currents is very tricky but there he is that is exactly how you do it just like that guys and that's just what we're doing here catching nice trout in deep deep water early in the spring and the Pontchartrain Wrigley's Basin We'll probably go try to do some other stuff as this tide gets a little velocity. We'll go ahead and finish out an episode right here with this fish. Hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to subscribe to our Dockside TV and our uh, Matrix Bait Box. Get your hands on the Shrimp Creole. This is one of everybody's favorites. This will be in this month's Bait Box. Come out here, try your hands at some of this deep water jig fishing. Fishing the old 90 bridge. It's got a lot of history right here in Lake Pontchartrain.